goodness gracious. Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Now, you know our next guest for his phenomenal work in Netflix's Chilling Adventures of Sabrina as Ambrose Spellman. Uh, and if you've watched all 10 episodes of Part 2 like I have, then you know for every question it answered, there are still a bunch more, especially when it comes to Ambrose. Uh, in addition to being awesome on this show, he's also garnered himself a leading actor BAFTA nomination for his work in BBC Three's Killed by My Debt. We could applaud for that, can't we? That's a BAFTA nom, Babel. Huge. Uh, he's wonderful. Uh, he does wonderful things, and he is here to have a wonderful conversation. Folks, the great Chance Perdomo's in the building. You excited? I'm excited. Sounds like you're excited. I just got to make sure. I'm not bringing them out here if you're not excited. So, um, sounds like you are, so we're good. Uh, we're going to do it in just a second. We're going to kick things off. We're going to get them out here. We're going to hang out. We're going to chat. It's going to be great. But first, I believe we have a trailer for part two of Sabrina. So let's go ahead and run that clip. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, give me a ridiculous amount of noise. The great chance Perdomo's right here. Come on. God bless. Amen. God bless. Hi, folks. Oh, dude, congratulations. I mean, on life right now. You've got so much going on. Part two is out. People have watched it. People are in the process of watching it, and we all love it. It's fantastic. Uh, this, this BAFTA nomination is huge. That's crazy, that right? Is I, like, every time, every time someone says something, I, think, I can't really sink. It doesn't really sink in. And then every time someone says something, my stomach just flips. Like, Benedict Cumberbatch, Hugh Grant... <laughs> Then just <laughs> I, it's it's out of control, man. What did when 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 they told you? Where were you? What happened to your world? What what? How did you receive this information? I still haven't received it. If I'm gonna be honest, I was I was I was You're still waiting. It was like eight, it was like eight a.m. I was asleep, right? And then uh, my agents called me and they're like, "Hello, oh hi, sorry, Chance, sorry to wake you, but uh, you've got nominated for a BAFTA." I'm like, "Sorry to wake me? No, like, come on, call me at two a.m. Call me whenever." So it's just yeah. That is uh, culturally, that is very much a British thing. I think yeah, right? <laughs> apologizing to give you some of the greatest news you'll hear, probably for a long time. This is great. It's, it's like a, a lifetime moment. And they're still apologizing. I kind of love it's that. It's definitely very English. Like you very could, English. You could, you could hit someone and they'll apologize to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Canadians are almost the same in the, in a, in a, from well, what I'm I understand. Sorry, eh? Yeah, I'll exactly. Yeah, just very polite people. Actually, do you know what I'm figuring out? It's not that Canadians, it's just Americans are assholes. That's what that is. <laughs> everyone else is great. and We're just jerks. And we're but like, look how nice everyone cool. is. I don't know. I think um, I got both. So I kind of like go. You got a little bit of both. All right, so you're right two. down the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. That's a good place to be. You can go a whole half the time. Only I <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna find out what half we got for the next twenty minutes. I feel like we got a good one, though, um, dude. I'm so yeah, I'm so happy for you because it's just it's it's an amazing time in your life. I, I want to dial it back before we even dive into where we are present day. Uh, and forgive me for asking you to tell a story that I, I feel like you might have had to tell a bunch of times. But I only recently found out that before you were getting to this show was a very interesting road. You had auditioned for uh, Jughead. That is correct. You were Amen. you were auditioning for Riverdale. Yes, I heard some gas. I'm not alone. <laughs> some people didn't know that. That was one of my first auditions, actually. Yeah, I was. Um, I did a self tape, and it was like one of my second or third self tape ever ever did. And uh, I heard back, and they said, "Do you want me to do another one?" And another one, and another one. So I went round after round, um, until they finally said, "Sorry, it's not going your way, but you were close. Good feedback, right?" It was only when I did the uh, the the screen test for Sabrina, Roberta was like, "Brother, do you know how close you came?" And I was like, "I was like, no, tell me." He's like, "It was you almost got the role. It was like between like I don't know." anywhere from like three to four people or something like that. And, and uh, yeah, and then he was like, so he remembered me and he wrote the role of Ambrose with me in mind. And like this two years later, basically, <laughs> a year or two years later, he just, he had me in mind and carried that over. That's pretty incredible, man. Right? Does that mess with your head a little bit when somebody goes, uh, you, he, I you thought of you for two years, <laughs> and I thought of this character that only you could play. Here you go. Do you get in your head of like, oh, crap, I hope I can do the thing that oh my, he thinks I can do? Before like, any project, any project is always like, what do I do? What's my process? What do I do? And I just kind of have a little bit of a meltdown before I kind of go, it's all right. It's all right. This is the, yeah. <laughs> this is breathe. Um, but yeah, the, the first day, the first day, first shot, first take of any Sabrina, I was, uh, I was, it was, it was like a, a monologue that kind of encapsulates the first two episodes. And I was like so shaky that I was like, I couldn't remember the words. And Roberto had to come and tell me off. He was like, brother, this is one of the most important monologues of this episode. I love your word. I need Roberto. you to say. <laughs> okay. Keep going. Sorry. sorry. He's like, I need you to get it right. And I was like, mm-hmm. 
And then, and then since then, it's been like, <laughs> yeah. Like a, no a, a pressure. Baptism of fire, yeah. so to speak. Oh, well, how appropriate, right? See what I did there? Yeah, no, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I like it. It's very nice. How did, did they, when you received that phone call, did you get an apology in the beginning of that one as well? When they were like, hey, you're going to be on the show? It was more American. It was more straightforward. No, I actually found out on DM, on Instagram. Wait, yeah, 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 yeah. That's as American so, as that so, shit gets right there. I didn't even pick up a phone to yeah, call they, you. They, they were like... <laughs> Congrats, totes proud of you, Sent. No, it was like, um, no. You got told through emojis. That yeah, you... <laughs> yeah. It got like the, the film emoji and the thumbs up emoji. No, uh, David Rappaport was like, uh, he just sent all caps, congratulations. And I sent him back like a, a picture of me like this. And then uh, my manager's called and they were like, they beat you by like 10, 10 minutes. And I was like, great guys, but I got to call you back. And I called my mom and I just started crying. And I get emotional thinking about it now. I just started crying. And then that was all she needed. She was like, what? You got it? And I just went, mom. And then she went, hold on, hold on. And she kind of, she was driving. She pulled the car over and she went, what? What? And, and, we, and she was like, she was heaving of emotion. And we were just crying for like 20 minutes like a bunch of idiots. Yeah. That is both beautiful and a little gross, but mostly beautiful. That is mostly, mostly. 99% mostly. beautiful. I don't know if she actually threw up or she was heaving, but I, I remember the sound. <laughs> yeah, just but like the idea of being so consumed with emotion and joy and caught up mm. in that moment that your body just kind of reacts. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. My God, how did she take the BAFTA nom? Is she all right? Did I, she... Oh, well, my, my mom was in North Carolina when I was, um, when I was, when I, when I, I called. So yeah. uh, she was like, for her, it was like, I called my dad first, yeah. and I started crying. He thought, he thought something happened, because I, 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 was, I was alone with the little brothers and whatnot, yeah. and I started crying, I was like, Dad, Dad, he was like, oh no, oh no, and I was like, no, no, it's good, it's good. Yeah, you gotta um, start giving them a preamble. Yeah, right, right. You gotta give them a heads up. So, so I called my mom, and for her, it was like 4 a.m. at the time, or whatever, I, um, and then she was like, she was like, oh, oh yeah, that's very nice, honey, that's very nice, what? And she was asleep, she was like, what? Oh my God, what? 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 Tell me again. I've just woken up. And, and then we just kind of like hugged each other up. That's beautiful, man. That's so cool. Dude, the last uh, 18 months or so of your life has just been a roller coaster, it's hasn't it, man? completely flipped sideways, yeah. upside down, left, right, inside out. It's, it's changed. And you've got, you, you've developed, a, as evident here, a very uh, devoted, passionate fan base. God bless. Uh, and very exciting fans. Um, have you reached that point yet? Are people seeing you on the streets? Are they, are they calling out to you, stopping you for photos? You've gotten there? I mean, I mean... I got glasses recently, and then I changed up my hair. So before that, like, you know, uh, after that, not really. Yeah. But, um, but before that, yeah, it was like an everyday oh, thing. Right. It was, it, it was well, I could go everywhere. It's just, <laughs> I'd be stopped everywhere. Stop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like, to, you know, I always welcome it. Like, I, I love, you know, because you know, it shows the love and support that people have. Like, oh, sure. to, to be moved, to be able to be like, yo, I need to stop you to tell you I love this show. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. To even see, like, um, I've had, like, all types of people just kind of like, you know, they shake and whatever. I have like grown men that like almost moved to tears. Like I, I, had, I had- You promised you wouldn't tell anybody I did that in the green room. <laughs> you promised you wouldn't. <laughs> well, no, there was, there was this dude. That was, there was this dude who was like, you know, this big guy comes up to me. He's like, and I'm like, oh, snap, what did I do wrong? And he goes, oh my God, dude. And then just start shaking. You know? <laughs> That's amazing, yeah. Yeah, the show, it's its so great, and in, you guys, it's connecting with a lot of people in a lot of mm -hmm. ways, and the other thing that's really fascinating is because it's on Netflix, is it was kind of like a light switch, right? Like, you yeah. worked on it forever, global and then audience. all of a sudden, boom, global audience. Mm -hmm. There it is. Everyone can see it, and everyone can recognize it. So it's a very uh, uh, crazy experience for you guys to be going through together. Yeah, I mean, yeah. What, one of my um, one of my uh, father figures, so he he's a, he's a shout-out Sterling. He's, he's, he's a big, big samurai guy, and he was training in... Um, in a dojo, like a, in, a, in rural Japan, like you know, an hour and a half outside Tokyo, right? And then someone comes up and is like, "Oh, your son, famous actor, famous," actor. and he was sorry for that messed up accent, <laughs> but like, but they were like, they were like, famous actor, famous actor, and he was like, "Damn!" And he gave me a call immediately, and it was just crazy. I was in LA at the time, and just to know that it's literally everywhere in the world. Like I've had messages from Serbia to you know England to Russia, Japan, like it's, and I read everything. Trust me, I, I read, I read everything. Oh, Everything. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. You said that in such a way that a couple of people got real nervous in this room. Like, oh, should he write everything? He read I see you now. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, well, okay, let's get into part two, man. I'm really excited to talk to you about it. And uh, I'll do my best. Hang on a second. Have we all watched it? We watched some of it? Most of it? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody right here got mad at me for asking that. 
<laughs> say, what do you think? Yes, I watched it. Honey, <laughs> please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, fair enough. I'm going to do my best. We'll, we'll try to talk without spoiling too much, but we've all presumably watched it, and uh, it's been out for a couple of days. Uh, I talked to Kieran and them last week, the, that Lou Percalia episode, man. Woo! 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 <laughs> that was yeah. That was, and you're kind of like the, the <laughs> ringleader, man. You you got the you're blowing the horn. Yeah. Uh, the booty yep. horn. Yeah. They're blowing that. Booty horns. <laughs> People were going crazy. Talk to me about when you first got cray cray. that script and you saw what was going to happen, because because uh, that's a wild episode. Okay, right, I'll show you exactly what happened when we read the script, right? <laughs> so we're all all man, the whole room, you know, the, the script reading, like this. We just kind of look at each other and we go. <laughs> and that's it, that's it. You know, Ross there, he was like, well, Ross actually went, man, why can't I be a wizard? Like a warlock, right? <laughs> Hey, missing out, you're on the outside circle now. Uh, you know, and, and we laugh and we joke, and that episode is a, a crazy wild ride of an episode. But there, you, yeah. sir, end up uh, in some terribly dark circumstances in, in this particular section. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, One part might two say here. deep doo-doo. Yeah, in incredibly deep doo-doo. Yeah. Up to your earlobes in deep doo-doo, man. Up to it, right. <laughs> it is pretty rough. You know, how much coming into this show, how much of your arc are you aware of? Do you know that's coming? You talk about being nervous on day one. Do you uh, get in your head that, oh my God, I know I've got to really deliver it and I've got to be in these dark places and I've got to do these dark things. Like, how do you prepare for something like well, that? Well, I kind of I like, you know, R Roberto likes to keep, Roberto's kind of like, it's like a, it's like a, Contrast or juxtaposition, right? He, he's he's very open to collaboration, and you know, with the writers' room, is like, you do have any ideas and whatnot. But he's also very close to the chest about it, right? So you know, it, it only when something's set would he like try and hint at it. Um, but but definitely, yeah, we we I, I you know, we had ideas and we're like sending Ambrose to the Ringer, and they certainly sent Ambrose to the Ringer, definitely. Um, but no, yeah, I I kind of know where. At least I did know where he was going for this next part that we're going to film three and four. Oh, so you know? Uh, okay, cool. Kind of. I don't. I don't know the full trajectory, but I know kind of where he is in the beginning uh, of the part, and you know the kind of trajectory he's gone. Um, you know that we've broken Ambrose down, let him show him some 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 newer layers um, to be able to continue on on a certain arc. Yeah. How much? All right. So we know you know ahead. We know you know a little bit of that. We won't get into that, obviously. But we've only, as viewers, gotten like little bits and pieces of his history, of his oh, past. Yeah. yeah. And there is clearly a lot going on there. How much mm. of that are you privy to that we haven't seen yet, and will we ever see any? Of I mean, a little bit more than you guys, but not too much. Too much, you know, because it's it's. I, I know what's I'm what I'm supposed to know. Relevancy wise, um, you know, because. Some of the stuff we're still kind of like trying to solidify, and at the same time, you know, Roberto and the writers, they, uh, they, they like to be able to change things as well. So they don't want to tell you until it's set. Otherwise, I'll make certain character decisions and behavioral patterns that, will, that might not be set by the time we get there. Um, so he gives me hints. Um, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> How much of the past do you yeah. know? Oh, yeah. So uh, yeah. Ambrose has a very, very rich, he has a very, very, very rich past. So I, I, know, I know probably a great deal more than the audience does, yeah. but not as much as you would think. Um, I kind of, I kind of know hints and whatnot, um, and you know, I, I worry more about, I think about more about the emotional journey of the characters, right. um, the the details and the facts come later on. Like it's more, where was the character at an emotional place? What might have happened? So you can kind of like build upon it there. Well, that's the thing that I'm, fa I'm curious about. It's like you've got to know some of it because you need a foundation upon which. Of uh, you need a lens for him to view these current circumstances through. You need that perspective. And it's also, but it's also serialized TV as well, right? We have to, we, we have a schedule to keep. So let's say something happens. We need to be able to. Uh, well, they need. <laughs> we we. I just I just do the lines, right? They 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 um they need to be able to you know uh to work around whatever real life stuff happens, right? So um, so yeah, it ma it makes sense that not everything is set, so they can keep the conveyor belt going. So to speak. Talk about uh, working with. We had uh, Tati was here yesterday, uh, last night, and the you know Ambrose and, and Prudence. They sort of uh, they feel like a great fit. They feel like the, a natural fit together. Shout out Tati. Yeah, and and, uh, and she had nothing but great things to say about working with you. Of course, uh, were you excited to sort of see that pairing coming down the pipeline and how you two yeah. would kind of become friends and, and involved with, as the show progressed and whatnot? Yeah, I mean from the from the very first scene that you know they had together, there was definitely a tension, right? Yeah. So they, they, I think they kind of saw that and built, built upon it uh, afterwards. But it does make sense. Like they've they've gone through similar traumas and whatnot. So whereas, for example, Luke and Ambrose, Luke was able to open up Ambrose. You know, Prudence is able to you know uh, uh, heal uh, some of the older wounds and help reconcile that because they've been through similar traumas. So I do think they're a very good fit, um, especially if they're. Oh, I can't spoil it. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, we can't spoil it, but, uh, but we all know what we're talking about. Uh, we know where, they, where, where they go to the place to do the thing. When the yeah, exactly, the place to do the thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We've, <laughs> um, uh, the, you, you mentioned, uh, this is another thing that I was talking about that I think is great about this show, is that even amongst uh, all, all the wizards and, and the witches and the fantasy and all that stuff, the show, uh, I think of like uh, Theo's character arc and, and you know, uh, Ambrose's uh, sexual, sexual fluidity and just like who, who he's comfortable with and wants to be with. This is a show that even with all of these characters that technically aren't human, they're telling very human stories. And it's got to be an exciting place to work where yeah. you get to delve into all these different things and represent all these different people and, and be a part of that. And what just what that's like. They certainly don't brush with uh, with broad strokes, right? Right. They're, they're detailed in their approach, right? Um, uh, it's it's deeply artist, deeply artistically and personally gratifying, satisfying to be able to uh, play whatever part in pushing for these new uh, authentic narratives, right? Because you know it's you know it, 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 quotas or buzzwords are you know quite hot, like you know uh, ethnic minorities are hot right now, Black Panther and whatnot. It, that makes money, and you know uh, uh, LGBTQIA quota. But I, what I like about this show and Netflix particularly is they don't seem to like. Uh, to use it as a buzzword or a quota, right? They, right. they, they paint them as multifaceted individuals. It makes sense. Netflix has got a global audience. They yeah. need to represent authentic authentically. Otherwise, who's going to watch their shows, right? Precisely. And that's, and that's the beauty of it, is that they're telling stories that are they're actual stories. They're, they're yeah. not, it's not tokenism. It's not there exactly. just for the sake of being there. It's got a good point. Um, I see the, the countdown running down, and I definitely will not, under any circumstances, take away time from our audience Q&A. We're going to go to the audience. However... Uh, there is one thing I have to bring up that is not technically, well, no, it's not. It's just not Sabrina-related, but I saw it, and I got pretty excited over the idea because it makes a lot of sense. There is a small but lively community on the Internet uh, that have posted, and you've engaged in some of these posts as well, that on the heels of Spider-Verse, were Miles Morales... Miles Morales! Yes, exactly. Yes. Were he to become live action, and you would be there in a heartbeat. You should be live action. This is a thing I'm seeing online. And honestly, I can't find a good reason for you not to do it. I think you should be Miles. Wait, how long have you wanted to play can, can, can a superhero? Can we get a close-up real quick? Uh, let's go to camera three is your camera right now. Marvel, Marvel, here I am. Here I am. Hi, 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 boo-boo, what's good? Um, no, yeah, um, uh, no, yeah, so I've, I've, ever since I found out about the character, right, so, you know, I was like 12, 13, 14, right, um, and I looked, up, I looked up the character and I saw his ethnicity, that he was uh, Latin American and black at the same time, and I was like, wait, that's, that's, Yes, me. I can. I can. I would love to play it. Like, I, I literally. St I started free running and parkour just just from that. I was like, I was so like, you're already training. You're I, di I didn't even have an agent or anything. I'm like, I'm I'm about to I'm about to start training for when that day comes, right? And, <laughs> and I've been I've been at that stuff ever since. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm a firm believer. You got to put those things out into the universe, and uh, if we can in any way assist in putting it out there, I think we have. God willing, right? I mean, just Amen. for the just was quick poll. Anybody here interested in seeing him as Miles Morales in a live action movie? Round of applause. Oh wow. <laughs> Oh, you guys are going to make me cry, man. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I've said it before. I'll say it again. The entirety of Marvel's board of directors watches this sh every episode of our show. They have, have not missed a single one, so this does bode well. Uh, all right, Kate, we've got, we're either saying peace or we have two <laughs> questions. That's all I can tell. We're going to go there really, really, really quick. Before we do that, I have some from, uh, from Tumblr. I have some reactions that also from fans. I'm not lying. Uh, and I thought this was great. I just, how do you handle this <laughs> level of admiration and, and adoration that, that it just pours at you on a daily? These weren't hard for me to find. Uh, this, <laughs> this was one that I found. Be careful on Reddit now. Oh, is that Tumblr? This <laughs> is all Tumblr. This is Tumblr. No, I went to Reddit. This is Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> it's the internet. We can say anything, but we do have somewhat of a family audience. So Rad Corvo here uh, posted this one. Uh, you see something like this. That's my freaking baby. Here's it. We have another one. Uh, can I get a look at the next one that we have from Tumblr here? Oh, the love. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everything I never knew. <laughs> Everything I never knew I always needed. People absolutely just totally vibing with your character, with your performance, with you. What does that mean to you? How do you react to something it's, like this? It's, it's a blessing. I mean, like, I, I don't know how else to say it because it's, it, it's a blessing to be able to, cause to do your job and put your heart and soul into it and to have that reaction to it. Like, it means definitely on the right track with what I'm doing with the character because it's just like, I, I don't even know. My heart melts every time like, I see things like that. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think you can ask for a better reception, right? Yeah. It's it's. That's what you want. You want that, yeah. right? It's, it's kind of amazing. Beautiful. Uh, well, thank you, Oh the Love, and uh, the other uh, friend from Tumblr there. Now I've got, as Kate has told me repeatedly, two questions. Very eager questions here in this room. I believe we've given them microphones. The first question is right here in the front. Go for it. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I also share the whole everything that I never knew that I needed. <laughs> God bless Ambrose you. Ambrose is my favorite character. <laughs> What's a personality trait of that character that you admire and that you would? want to adapt on yourself? 
Oh, oh. Well, there's definitely I found there's definitely a bleeding effect when it comes to when it comes to character. Sometimes, like sometimes you don't want to take them home. Sometimes you do. Um, and I found when I started playing Ambrose, certain Ambrose isms were like coming through into my normal life. Um, I don't know, like Amber's got a suaveness that I don't necessarily have, right? <laughs> but, but like, but you know, that so definitely ble bled into the way I was talking. I'm like, who are you? Why are you? Why are you? <laughs> um, but um, he's got a really big heart. That's what I. That's what I admire most about Ambrose. That he he he's through thick and thin. His family first, and uh, I share the same in that. Um, I definitely my my family comes first, and you know, securing them, and you know, being able to you know, generational security, whatnot. So without going too much into it, like, yeah, that's probably the, 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 the love for family. Do, uh, do your friends and family keep you in check when those Ambrose-isms Ambrose -isms pop out? Like, like, dude, that's not you. They don't do you pop do? up anymore. Okay, They gotta, don't gotta pop up anymore, yeah. I, I realize you don't have to take the character home. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you so much for your question, Kate. I think what was your name, by the way? Maggie. Maggie. I'm coming down. Oh, <laughs> questions are getting hugs. I didn't know this going in. I would have told you. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you good? I'm good. I'm good. All right. You seem to have a microphone. I'm going to venture a guess that you have a question. Yeah. Um, Ambrose is also my favorite character. So I was wondering how you think Ambrose has developed from season one to now. He's definitely allowed his... All right. Ambrose's suaveness and, you know, kind of uh, nonchalance, definitely like a, a mechanism of self-defense is how he learns how to deal with his traumas. Um, and there are a lot of traumas. Um, so he's definitely now he's coming into, coming in, into his, this new world. Um, so much has changed that he hasn't been privy to. 75 years is a long ass time. It's a lifetime, right? You know, so there are some people that before cars came out were in jail, you know, for life sentence come out and they don't know how to react to the world because there's cars driving everywhere. So... He's definitely have to look into his past and reconcile certain things he's going to have to to be able to move forward. And I think that's like the beginning of like once uh, uh, self-actualization, uh, his uh, heroic journey, so to speak, right? Um, so we'll see. Maybe he'll get a bit more badass, but maybe he'll be badass for the right reasons this time. <laughs> and what's your name? Bushra. Bushra. Lovely uh, to meet you. Okay, we're uh, doing this. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fantastic. I would have taken a bunch more. I knew you were going to hug everybody. Oh, my group gosh. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do a group hug before we, when we get out of here. Uh, Kate, is that it? We, we got to wrap things up? All right, I'm getting the signal. Uh, don't blame Kate. She's doing her job. We got uh, <laughs> to get out of here. But, um, guys, if you haven't already, go finish watching the rest of this incredible show. Uh, if you haven't watched any of it, I don't know why the hell you're watching this. Uh, go watch the show. Uh, <laughs> it's The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina on Netflix. Uh, part one and two are there now. Part three and four are coming soon. Have you guys started working on them yet? Uh, we begin pre-production uh, the beginning of May. So excited. Yeah. Beginning of May. Beginning of May, we find out how you do with the Baptists. That's going to be a huge... My heart fluttered <laughs> so much. My heart. Oh, we're going to get that group hug. Don't worry about it. Uh, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina are on Netflix right now. Uh, everybody, come on, make some crazy noise. This is Chance Perdomo right here. Thank you. God bless Thank you guys. You. God bless.